housekeeping rules. Um, may I please request that everyone keep their microphones muted and their videos off. Um, we will have a session at the end of the presentation for questions. So my name is Stacy, and together with Pierre here, um, we'll be your speakers for today. Um, so starting with myself, I am a specialist in software engineering here at Optinum, and my role involves the design and implementation of software architecture and solutions for our clients based on their requirements. One of my areas of interest is the cloud and how organizations can leverage its capabilities to optimize business outcomes. Pierre, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Stacey. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Pierre Arwemi. Uh, I work at MathWorks, so uh, the MATLAB and Simulink editor, and I'm uh, more focused on uh, application engineering, uh, which is how to uh, access data, develop uh, AI models, and then uh, deploy it on the cloud, but giving, for example, application to, to Stacey. So we uh, are we really the uh, the whole process and um, we make the link between uh, the development and the production between us. Thanks, Pierre. So, as you may know, um, cloud adoption has accelerated in the recent years, especially during the pandemic, and most companies are currently using one or more cloud solutions. So as you see in front of you, um, Paul Delory from Gartner has this to say about the context um, on, le on leveraging the cloud in your organization. So cloud uh, services let smart business leaders respond quickly to opportunities or threats, and businesses that successfully exploit cloud computing will have a competitive advantage, and it might even determine whether they survive. So as we ponder this, um, we would like to post a poll just to get an idea of your organization's level of adoption to the cloud. So please um, check your chat and please submit your answer. I'll just give it a second. Here it's so busy. Okay, um, sorry about that, because there's technical difficulties. I think we can continue and as soon as the, yes, the poll. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Stacey, I, I can make the call like it's, uh, it's enabled. Uh, okay. I don't know if it's because I'm not the presenter, but maybe you can do that just after. Okay, um, perfect. Yes, we'll try. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Um, no, no, yeah, fine. so maybe we can just continue. Um, <clears throat> So a question that a lot of people have is, what is cloud computing? So simply put, it is the on-demand delivery of computing resources via the internet. So say you have a personal computer and that's running an application and you're currently not happy with its performance. The cloud allows you to provision either um, more storage, um, more compute power, and you can access that through the cloud whenever you require it and you can deploy your application onto the cloud or batch off some of your jobs um, onto clusters that sit on the cloud. <clears throat> so in this webinar, we'll focus on the following three areas that we have identified that organizations would like to know about leveraging the cloud. So first, I'll talk through some of the major benefits that you can have. Um, when using the cloud. Then Pierre will take you through some of the various tools available for leveraging the cloud. And lastly, I'll present some of the real use cases that we have from our clients that demonstrate how you can develop a cloud strategy and um, work on something that's good for your business. So starting off with the benefits of um, 
the cloud. Um, and before we actually get into that, I'd like to mention that like any technology, the cloud does come with its pros and cons. So many of the issues that arise um, may come from a clear understanding of what the cloud providers provide and um, what tasks would remain um, in the responsibility of the users of the cloud. It is, however, proven that it is efficient for um, <clears throat> Um, sorry about that. Um, it is proven that efficient use of the cloud yields massive benefits that outweigh some of the limitations and risks. So looking at some of the benefits of the cloud, um, the first that I'll talk about is that the cloud is quite cost effective. And um, this is due to the, the fact that if you optimize your workloads, you only pay for what you use. As a result, you avoid over provisioning some of the hardware and you can give your teams more time to uh, focus on strategic work. The next um, benefit of using the cloud is scalability. So in terms of scalability, the cloud allows you to adapt to growing and changing uh, business needs. You can quickly scale resources up to meet um, business requirements and quickly scale down if resources aren't being used. The third benefit that I'd like to talk about today is speed. So speed is a big factor as most com um, cloud computing services allow you to develop and deploy applications within minutes. Typically, it just takes a few mouse clicks and the cloud gives you or your business a lot of flexibility and takes the pressure off um, capacity planning. Um, the last but not least is innovation. So cloud services promote innovation as you have unrestricted access to the latest technologies and capabilities. This makes it very easy for you to build up new ideas and design new applications without the hardware limitations that um, you may have. So now I'll hand over to Pierre to take you through some of the um, tools that you can use to easily um, leverage the cloud. Thank you, Stacy. Um, I will just take the control of the presentation so I can go through the slide. I think it's okay. Okay. Um, the idea is uh, to, to keep on uh, on the same line and to uh, see what tools in the MATLAB uh, solution, so the different tools, can answer different needs. So different needs, um, as Stacy said, uh, can be speed, uh, can be um, integration, deployment, etc. The uh, question we see from MATLAB user are uh, multiple, of course, but the main one uh, we wanted uh, to uh, highlight. Uh, the first one is okay. We have many uh, different teams in application engineering, uh, like AI modeling or uh, statistical uh, application or financial and econometrics. Uh, the idea is that they are more focused on. Uh, the domain itself, but they are not uh, really IT expert of soft software uh, expertise like like Stacy. Um, the second one uh, is uh, we have different teams, and th in these different teams, we have two like big area: the engineering and the IT and our software integration. And we want to make the link between uh, them, so the communication much robust much, and much uh, uh, fast, better uh, in a uh, in, in in this kind of uh, uh, relationship, uh, the other one is more on the IT integration team. Um, uh, we we sometimes facing a, a normal uh, uh, problematic is that the budget is quite limited. So uh, to adjust or to uh, uh, size the platform, when says platform is more the hardware, it's difficult uh, to know uh, upfront. Okay, and uh, for each of these question and much more, uh, of course, um, we have uh, different solutions. So the first one is that MATLAB, so you know MATLAB as MATLAB users, have many different applications. So when I say application is graphical interactive application uh, where you can uh, quickly prototype and develop uh, models, but also deploy uh, models to the cloud. Um, the other, and we will see that in an um, illustration after in the MATLAB uh, uh, code example, that MATLAB users can uh, use um, 
a, a solution inside uh, MATLAB to debug and then uh, uh, to accelerate uh, the communication between IT integration and, and then themselves. And the other one is that we have a, a on-demand licensing where you can test uh, different ad hardware and uh, to resize and then to uh, uh, validate um, uh, architecture uh, depending on your uh, problematic. Uh, also, there are many different reasons that you should or can move to the cloud. Um, among these, all of these uh, reasons, we have three big or main reasons. We see the first one is, of course, the access to the data. Uh, second one we see is the uh, uh, integration of uh, your data and your model. And the last one, uh, Stacy uh, spoke about this also, uh, it's both speed of integration, but also speed of calculation. So to access uh, data, we have many different, of course, platform inside the cloud. Uh, we'll talk mostly um, uh, about AWS and Azure here, but you can think, of course, of other like GCP. Um, Okay, and for integration also, we have many different types of integration. We have other software integration, so engineering software like Python, Java, C, C++, but we have also integration directly to business objects like Power BI, Click, Tableau, uh, and many others. So it's a whole process and workflow that we want to share with you with uh, these different tools. Um, and uh, regarding these uh, three main reasons, so access integration and speed, we have many possibilities. The first one is to use MATLAB directly in the cloud, as if you were in uh, on your desktop uh, local PC, but uh, directly in the cloud. And we will see why, of course. Um, second one, uh, a tool or license tool, is the MATLAB parallel server. The MATLAB parallel server is used uh, to speed up your code or your models, simulation, and calculation directly in the cloud. The third one um, is, is a, 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 yes, a more recent, uh, let's say, is the MATLAB web app server dedicated to graphical application built in MATLAB. And the last one, uh, the most important one in all integration step is the MATLAB production server. And here is to deploy MATLAB uh, code uh, and models in the cloud for, let's say, uh, production um, and, uh, and to have uh, uh, both uh, historical and streaming analysis. So let's start with the first uh, possibility. So how do you and, and why? Uh, should you use MATLAB directly in the cloud um, and uh, um, um, especially in AWS and Asia. So why especially? Because we have a direct uh, platform for now. We will uh, probably add the uh, other one uh, uh, in the future. So this is a model lifecycle or the uh, workflow, typical workflow we see from development to production. Uh, we firstly access and explore data pre-process it, okay, that's the two first and more consuming steps, um, uh, like 70% uh, of the whole workflow. Then we develop predictive model and uh, all the integration. Uh, so from production system to the visualization with a business object and the web application. For the uh, two first steps, so the accessing and pre-processing of the data, um, we have, uh, as I said, a reference architecture that we can use to create a stack of AWS in Azure and uh, to use all of the uh, different features uh, in these two platforms. When I say features, is uh, the storage, F3 and blob storage, the databases, um, so databases like uh, SQL, uh, so in Asia and Dynamo in uh, AWS and all of other like uh, Lambda, Data Lake, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And also we can uh, use uh, off the shelf uh, uh, a native function in MATLAB for Hadoop uh, and also plug into Databricks, Hive and many others we didn't like show, but uh, uh, other platforms that use uh, 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 other function like Spark or here Hadoop to access and pre-process uh, the data. 
quicker than in MATLAB. Um, if you are interested in how uh, do you uh, 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 how to handle a massive data or big data, uh, you can go to the documentation and type database and especially data store, which is a very powerful and useful object for all the big data uh, on uh, big data uh, problematic and directly link this object to AWS, to Azure, to Databricks, Hadoop, Spark, etc. And the other um, steps of AI modeling, we won't focus on this uh, today, uh, but this is of course the uh, step after the pre-processing. Um, and for uh, all of these three uh, first steps, uh, we can use MATLAB directly in the cloud. So why we can use it in the, uh, we should use it in the cloud. Of course, it is accessible anywhere, okay. Um, we accelerate the access of the data by moving uh, the accessing and pre-processing and, uh, and the modeling uh, directly closer to the data. We know that uh, accessing, so reading and writing data uh, take 50%, of course, depending on the data and your problematic, um, but generally take 50% of all of the time uh, consuming of the workflow. Uh, the other is like working together uh, in a collab collaboration way with different people. So sharing uh, hardware resources with them, um, sizing your uh, uh, um, sizing your, your demand uh, regarding your uh, uh, your, your, your type of massive, potential massive calculation, um, sh uh, sh sharing also data. There is, it's not uh, written here, but sharing data between uh, each other to, to, to not replicate also uh, the same pre-processing action or accessing action, etc. And then uh, potentially have much more powerful hardware uh, on the cloud. So to move this accessing, pre-processing, and processing or modeling uh, step closer to the data. Um, we use a reference architecture in AWS and uh, Azure, uh, directly on the cloud on a virtual network, which we, which is uh, pre-built. Um, I, I will show that just after. And all of this uh, dynamic licensing is is uh, uh, mainly uh, handled by uh, uh, the network. Uh, hosted license manager, which means that everything is very simple to uh, build here, uh, very fast, and you don't have to handle all of the licensing and security um, stuff uh, as a MATLAB user, but also as IT integrator. It's very easy to set up these uh, stacks of AWS and Azure. So this is the kind of output you can have when you connect remotely to uh, AWS. Uh, here is uh, here is Azure uh, machine. So you can see that it's like if you were in a, on your local PC and you can uh, make calculation, but uh, using uh, other hardware, be closer to the data, etc., etc. So all of the reason you can use uh, you can use MATLAB in the cloud. And to use MATLAB in the cloud, we have also the MATLAB online. Uh, if you know that, it's a very convenient way to share your uh, data, to share your files uh, in a collaboration way also. Um, and this is a, a quick video when we uh, connect to our MATLAB online um, account. Every MATLAB user will have its own account, but we can share in this MATLAB online many different files. Here is a very simple portfolio optimization problem that uh, we run in a live script and then we can uh, use this live script, share it with other MATLAB users in, Mat in, in the cloud. And um, the video stop, I think. Yeah, and uh, then share it with uh, a read-only or editing uh, view. Uh, like uh, like Git, GitLab, for example. So you make owners and you make only uh, viewers. Um, and this is very uh, convenient way to work together, prototype, model, and um, and I have uh, like a source control uh, management. Uh, other uh, uh, application, if you are used to work with other tools like Python, you can use uh, Jupyter Hub. 
um, platform to integrate directly your MATLAB models and to have in the same uh, uh, in the same location uh, and same platform all of your uh, um, uh, files and the modeling steps in your workflow. Uh, because it's not a focus also today, but uh, MATLAB now uh, can directly uh, communicate and is very uh, interoperable. Uh, I don't know if it's English, but uh, you have a high interoperability with Python, so you can uh, run your Python clone uh, uh, file, which will run the MATLAB file, etc. So in your Jupyter environment, it can be convenient to, uh, to do that. So this was for the MATLAB uh, desktop in the cloud. The other uh, main reason why we use the cloud, maybe the reason I see the most fre frequently is to speed up MATLAB and Simulink uh, calculation on the cloud. So uh, this is kind of the second step. You can stop here if you don't want to deploy it, but it's kind of second step. Uh, first one is, uh, okay, I access the data, uh, I pre-process the data and model, uh, 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 for example, AI modeling can be in MATLAB and also in other software like Python. Um, then uh, my calculation was only uh, in a prototyping way. So now I can uh, share uh, a scale, sorry, my calculation to all my data. Uh, Stacy, okay, you, you can do that. So you raise the poll. Uh, so please select one of the reasons uh, if uh, you have uh, you are interested in, in this uh, webinar. Thank you. Uh, yes, so the second step to scale, to scale to cluster, of course you can, uh, we are focusing on the cloud, but it's exactly the same uh, on your own on-prime, on-premise cluster. And it can uh, integrate also with other uh, scheduler if, uh, if you have like Slurm or, or PBS Pro. So here we'll focus on the cloud and especially on spinning up a calculation on the cloud. Um, the other, the, the main problematic that we see from MATLAB users, uh, the first one, of course, you understand is well, we have a lot of simulation or calculation like Monte Carlo simulation, for example. And I, I can do that on my local PC because it takes two, 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 two times and I don't have enough memory. Uh, and we have other uh, reasons, like I don't have the new MATLAB release, okay, and the server we have uh, locally is not already up to date. Uh, I have a limited budget, more uh, IT integration team, so I don't know the hardware uh, regarding our, our calculation. Uh, I need more cores, but just sporadically. Okay, just in two days during the, the year, I don't want to buy a whole server because it's expensive. And since uh, we don't uh, uh, um, scale calculation uh, every every day, uh, I just need like uh, in a very short uh, period. Uh, other, we do have a, ser a server, uh, which is uh, uh, okay with the dimension, but we don't have any GPUs and for some of the calculation we have, GPUs uh, sometimes are much uh, more efficient than CPUs, especially for Monte Carlo simulation in in, uh, in finance uh, or, or, or econometric application. So why do you use the cloud? Um, the first, and it answers one of the uh, problematic uh, of the last slide, is that you can uh, use an on-demand uh, uh, um, uh, so you can have sporadic on-demand usage. So if you want to use it only a few days in the week and test it. Also, you can customize, of course, and uh, now from like one or two years, I don't remember, resize your hardware. Like you choose uh, a number of cores in your server, on your server, on the Azure and AWS server, and you Tell him, okay, depending on my calculation, please resize uh, down and up the number of cores uh, related to my needs. So that will have uh, 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 different numbers of cores depending of the calculation you, you scale. Uh, this is a convenient way to, to reduce uh, the cost, for example, of the, uh, the your usage. 
And the, th the third uh, uh, reason um, why it's very easy to scale because you have marketplaces in Azure and AWS to quickly and easily in an interactive way uh, create your stack on your cluster and dimension it. So everybody can do that. You don't have to have any IT skills uh, to de deploy uh, and to scale your model. And then I spoke a little bit uh, of this. You can use all of uh, the different features you can have on the cloud. So uh, the storage, uh, also the Redis, if you want to to uh, to to access cache uh, and uh, uh, the Lambda, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I, I just mentioned uh, the main uh, features uh, we see uh, in uh, for MATLAB users. Just an example on the code, very easy. Uh, of course, um, the workflow is this one and it's very easy. Um, on the left, you have uh, your MATLAB desktop. Uh, on, uh, uh, um, on the MATLAB desktop, you have the parallel computing toolbox. The parallel computing toolbox is used to distribute and parallelize your calculation, simulation, um, and the matrix, for example, matrix computation, etc. Uh, you first prototype on, uh, this is typical workflow, but you first prototype on your uh, local uh, PC, then you validate, okay, it works. Uh, we uh, firstly uh, win a little time, okay, we reduce the time of the computation, but now I scale it on the, on the server, on the cloud or on-premise with the MATLAB parallel server, which is a tool or licensing uh, model. Um, the idea is, the only one line that you will change is the first one. Uh, it is a par pool and you will directly point to the cluster HPC1, which is the cluster, for example, in the cloud. And we, you will use much more cores or workers, MATLAB workers. So 100 here and uh, locally you have only four, for example, but here you can choose 100 and after so the, the, the main idea you have to remember is that the code is not changing. You don't have to change the code to deploy and scale calculation. Uh, this is a very important and the main reason why the MATLAB parallel server is very powerful and uh, convenient is that you don't waste your time by adapting code uh, when you want to scale in another platform. And um, also remember that it's cross-platform. You can work on Windows and you can scale to Linux and vice versa and Mac also, but we don't ever see Mac. Uh, so it's cross platform, so very convenient. Uh, for example, I work in on Windows and I always use Linux on the cloud. And it will be exactly the same for the deployment if I forget it after. Uh, so I say that now. And of course, we you can dimensionate uh, or size and resize the the cluster on the cloud for CPUs, but also for GPUs and select multiple GPUs if you want. Um, I spoke a little bit about this, but um, the, the architecture uh, is very simple. Uh, you embed the MATLAB job scheduler, which is a native uh, scheduler of a MATLAB parallel server. Um, and uh, when you use on the right the reference architecture available on GitHub, uh, everything is done very easily uh, and uh, the uh, virtual network and virtual machine are pre-built and you can run the stack and it will take from five to ten minutes uh, to have your own uh, virtual machine available on AWS and on Azure. And then you will be able to deploy your, your calculation. So the first big step is how to integrate all of these uh, models on the cloud. Uh, different for speeding now is more from for production, streaming analysis, uh, and uh, uh, batch, for example, batch uh, modeling, etc. So there are many also uh, different reasons why uh, you can do that. You can do that uh, to deploy uh, uh, graphical application, to, to uh, integrate uh, with other uh, uh, system, a system like uh, Java, C++, Python, but also for visualization with a dashboard, third-party dashboard like uh, Power BI, Tableau, Click, Spotfire, etc. So you have different reasons and different solutions. 
uh, I said it, you can deploy web app on the cloud. You can deploy MATLAB models and algorithms uh, as function as a service. So, you know, uh, a model as a service, uh, 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 software as a service, etc. But you have function as a service. Uh, very similar, you can also deploy algos, algorithms as microservices, microservices, or it's French accent. Um, and then uh, you can, of course, deploy this function as a service, microservices in the cloud, Azure, AWS, and other. And um, the tool you will use to do that is the MATLAB production server. And you can deploy function as a service and microservices with this MATLAB production, uh, production server tool. And you can have the possibility to deploy in a Kubernetes cluster if you want. This will not be part of uh, this uh, next slide and, and, uh, and code example, but keep in mind that you can do that now. So you have different tools for other solution. Also, uh, you have the MATLAB compiler, which is the first tool to deploy executable uh, Excel add-in uh, and web application and Docker standalone application and uh, standalone uh, uh, containers. And you have the MATLAB compiler SDK, where you can see the MATLAB production server um, uh, on, the, on the right, um, uh, where uh, you can deploy uh, also different libraries uh, from Python to .NET and Java and C++, but also uh, use production server to deploy microservices and uh, API. So API is for function as a service and deploy it potentially on the cloud. Just a quick, quick focus on the web app server, uh, which is a uh, pretty new, like uh, three years ago. It's not new now, but uh, uh, we add more and more feature in that uh, product. So how it works, it's you use a, a uh, a, a tool app designer in MATLAB where you will design your app, okay, as his name uh, say. Um, and uh, this tool is not new from like seven years probably, but if you don't know it, it's very uh, also easy way with drag and drop and interactive action to uh, develop directly your app and the code is automatically generated behind in a oriented object uh, uh, programming way. So very easy, very robust, and uh, you have to use this tool to then deploy your app uh, in a, a, a web app server and potentially on the cloud. So use the app designer to create the app. You use the MATLAB compiler to package it in one click. So this is where the link between, for example, St uh, me and then Stacy is. Uh, I package, it's my domain expert, I don't have any IT skill. I give the uh, package or the file to Stacy, uh, who is more a software or IT administrator, and then um, uh, 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 she uh, 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 um, builds the architecture of the MATLAB web app server on the cloud, and everybody uh, so end user can connect to uh, this uh, web app server with a, a simple uh, URL and uh, use a different application I, I made. And this is how it looks like. Uh, we have many different web app here in, a, uh, in the web app uh, server. And when I click on one, I can use it directly. And behind this, uh, you have, of course, all of the uh, MATLAB computation and we have uh, many different also features that uh, behind this all of the security the authentication authentication um, and i have the policy base role base etc possibility to split each application in each uh, uh, in each uh, uh, family or type or application and you can order all of your application in this um okay and the other way is more for uh, uh, function as a service and uh, integration in all system uh, ecosystem, IT ecosystem. So the first one is you can package MATLAB application and microservices into Docker image. Uh, just here a quick focus uh, because it's uh, it has like two years um, and you have all 
the information, uh, how, how you can do that in the document MATLAB documentation. And on GitHub, you have also a reference architecture that you can use uh, directly to create your container image uh, with, uh, uh, with MATLAB and Docker. Um, an example also on how you can generate a Python library from MATLAB and with the MATLAB compiler SDK. Uh, the idea is, of uh, again, in one click, I don't have any IT skills, uh, I can deploy a, a Python library, and then I can use this Python library. If you see here the first line, you import MATLAB, and then you import, uh, the example is SignFit library, and then you can use it directly in Python. Um, so that's very also uh, uh, efficient and convenient way to make the link between different teams, but this time MATLAB teams and Python teams. If you use both, it's uh, uh, of course convenient too. And then the step after is how to use MATLAB production server and especially in the cloud, so more function as a service with RESTful API. So why? Because it's very easy to deploy again and share. It is uh, cross-platform and you can use um, different releases if you want um, and uh, the update is has no any interruption is very important here because uh, it happened all the time uh, you have improved security automatically and a very good performance uh, with a very short response time uh, especially for streaming analysis and you will have as many uh, workers that we want i just put four because it's a minimum but with four MATLAB workers, you can uh, 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 already answer, uh, I don't know, but uh, many, many, um, uh, um, uh, uh, you say, call to a different function. Um, so how you can deploy this asynchronous models into production? So then you, uh, firstly, you, of course, centralize all of your model and your function with no interruption. Then you can use many different MATLAB versions on the same server. You can connect to different uh, uh, software and enterprise application, as I said before, with a RESTful API, so very common way to communicate between the uh, MATLAB algorithm and uh, the uh, other algorithm like Python.net, etc. But also the, the dashboards. You can do that, of course, on-premise, but also on the cloud with the reference architecture, the same location in GitHub than the MATLAB parallel server, but now MATLAB production server on Microsoft Azure and uh, on AWS. It's a very high performance because you have a very short response time. Uh, I didn't speak about this, but I didn't speak about it, but you have also a queuing automatic queuing system, so you can handle many, many different requests per second and per minute, uh, if uh, your algo is uh, a little longer. And as I said, you can use a, a, a Kubernetes hosted reference architecture again on GitHub, uh, where you can build uh, MATLAB containers with, uh, uh, with Docker uh, to answer other potential problematic like elasticity, uh, resilience and performance. And we facilitate the link between the MATLAB user, so me, and the IT integrator, so Stacy. I will, after, uh, show a quick example of how you can test, debug, and then validate uh, your model yourself, when say yourself with MATLAB user, and give and deploy it uh, directly to, uh, to the cloud. So let's say I need to, uh, or she needs uh, here, uh, to put uh, the MATLAB model into production, so the idea, I am a MATLAB user, I develop a very complex function, uh, so add matrix. I use uh, the MATLAB uh, production server where I just have to click on one button, which is package, uh, which will generate the archive, find the dependencies, which is very important. We have many different uh, dependencies of uh, each function. And then uh, she will upload the file on the server and uh, the model will be available on uh, here Azure, and I can uh, communicate with the RESTful API. You can see a very simple example on the right, uh, where I call the function, it will automatically uh, 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 calculate, and then I will have the results in outputs. 
a very, very convenient way to make the link between me and, and, and the other team uh, is to win a lot of time uh, by debugging locally before deploying it. Why? Because if I didn't have this, uh, that means that I deploy it, there is an error on the cloud, I change it and give it again, etc. Et you can imagine that it can be uh, very long. So I can um, simulate as if I were on the cloud with this button test client. And then when I do the test client, I can uh, firstly see if there is any error and then uh, um, put a, a, a break point in all of line uh, as if I were in, a, in a, a, my uh, a local PC and then packages if I validate it. And when I package, uh, it will update automatically. If you work with Python also, you can determine if the error is from Python or from MATLAB. Very important. Uh, if it's from Python, I go to Python and from MATLAB, I keep on working on MATLAB. Uh, so I, if I update the function, I said it before, but there will be no interruption on the server. So the calls and the requests from end user won't be affected. This is very, very important. Um, so I spoke about all of the reference architecture available on GitHub. This is a very short video where you can see that everything is uh, rebuilt and you just have to click on several buttons and then it will automatically uh, create your hardware resources. Um, one of the real use cases in a predictive maintenance uh, uh, um, problematic we had here in France uh, here is this. So it like illustrates all of the different steps that we see with uh, the MATLAB production server when uh, the uh, MATLAB users um, will deploy the function. Here is a, just a deep learning model. And then the MATLAB production server will connect with streaming uh, analysis platform, so uh, Kafka. Uh, we'll use Redis Cache uh, and then we'll deploy calculation on a business decision. Here is Grafana for visualization. So this was a, a very interesting uh, little complex architecture, but done with uh, uh, this MATLAB production tools. And of course, he has the possibility to debug his application before uh, move, moving to the cloud. The final output of this was that, so it is Grafana. And you see uh, that um, uh, behind this, you have all of the different requests, many uh, requests per second uh, on MATLAB production server. And uh, as new data is coming, uh, the uh, uh, model with, will update this uh, 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 plot, etc. And we have a, a different result. Okay, and you can think of many, many different uh, ecosystem, data sources, and problematic. Uh, you don't have only Kafka, but you have many different uh, other uh, 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 software. You can plug it with uh, CI, CD platform like Jenkins, with Domino uh, also, and use other large-scale simulation and, and databases uh, like Cloudera, Palantir, etc. We have many different real use cases. Uh, here, uh, behind this uh, different example. Okay, so that was for my part. I give you, Stacy, uh, the control to uh, to speak about the strategy and to end up with this uh, workflow. Great. Um, yeah, thanks, Pierre. Um, continuing with um, the next area, um, what cloud strategy is right for your business? Um, with this um, section, I'll take you through a few case studies that um, will demonstrate some of the work that we've done for our clients that um, essentially help them leverage the cloud. So the first use case is a property development client who was looking to leverage the cloud in order to gain insights from their data and automate the process of generating reports. They had no issues with their database system itself. However, it was evident that there was a lack of um, uh, data management. <clears throat> the sources of the report were not clear, and some of the data was sitting in Excel files that were populated manually. 
There was also very tight key person dependencies for calculations and report customization. This led to inconsistencies in reported numbers produced by the different departments. So in this case, um, the solution that was built was a fully fledged solution within the existing environment with the data in the ETL on premise, but the Power BI dashboards were added to the cloud. The benefits of this solution included the date, um, data curation and governance, where we now have a single source of the data and <clears throat> the systems, um, we actually implemented systems that keep track of the changes. The other benefit was that the system was fully automated such that the stakeholders spent more time deriving insights from the data rather than compiling reports. And there was now a shared access and collaboration system because the Power BI dashboards were deployed onto the cloud. So now looking at the um, high level workflow of it, um, I know Pierre has taken you through some of the um, features that we have uh, within MATLAB, so I won't spend too much time on it, but here we have a high level diagram of the system where we first develop the algorithm that is used to curate um, the central database. The algorithms are compiled and added to the on-premise server, as I've just mentioned, and those run on an automated schedule. So I've mentioned that we've added some processes to keep track of the changes that happen on the database, and that's logged and sent out via emails to the relevant um, stakeholders. So the resultant um, curated database that we have here is then fed onto Power BI dashboards that are then published and shared to end users who can access them from anywhere from the internet. <clears throat> the next case study that we'll look at is a financial services client who was looking to improve the performance of their models by migrating their database and automatically scaling their resources onto the cloud. Their on-premise database could not handle the large amounts of data that was growing um, very rapidly. So this led to slow um, model runs, um, especially for their batch processing, which they only ran once a month. So in this case, the solution was to migrate their data onto um, the cloud. And then once that was done, the models were also deployed to MATLAB production servers um, in Docker containers on the cloud. So this had a massive benefit to the performance of the system and uh, a process that took up to one day was now cut down to four to six hours. In addition, they were now able to use other analytics tools in the cloud like Azure Synapse and Tableau, as well as Power BI. So we'll also just have a quick look at um, the high level system diagram that is quite similar to the previous case. But in this case, we see that um, the data sources are now migrated to the cloud um, and subsequently the models are now deployed onto the cloud where the analytics and visualization tools can be leveraged for the end users to get an even more um, insights into their data and their models. So in summary, we have taken a look we have taken a look at um, some of the cloud benefits that you can get for your organization. Both um, me and Pierre have mentioned how it can be cost effective, scalable, fast and innovative to use the cloud. Um, we've also taken you through some of the tools that you can use to le uh, leverage the cloud very easily. Um, this include um, using MATLAB desktop um, directly on the cloud or scaling up using parallel server and web app server and also um, integrating to some of the features that are available in the cloud through production server. Um, the last thing that I've also just mentioned is um, examples of cloud strategies that may be right for your system or for your business. Um, and I've mentioned um, a cloud ready solution, which was a hybrid approach where you, you use both your on premise resources and also integrate to some cloud environments that would be beneficial. That I've also mentioned is a cloud optimized solution where we see how an, applicate, an application can be migrated onto the cloud um, and the process can be optimized to deliver more value, um, save on costs and time. 
And that brings us to the end of our presentation today. Um, thank you so much for listening and we'll now be taking any questions you may have. If there's no questions, um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, I have added our our emails onto one of the first slides. Maybe I can just pull that up. But you may also just um, pop us a message onto the chat if you think of anything. And yeah, we'll get back to you. But thank you all for joining the webinar today, and we hope that you have a great rest of your day. Uh, yeah. Yes, thank you also, uh, Stacy, uh, for uh, for this uh, presentation. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Michelle is uh, answering, but yes, the recording and the presentation in PDF format will be uh, sent to to you. Yes. Okay. Thanks, everybody, and have a great rest of your day. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye. See you soon. All right. Bye.